Thank you, Gladys, for leading us in that uh, scripture uh, reading. Um, it's nice to be back, and I thank God uh, to have given me an opportunity to share his word with his people once again. So I thank God for this opportunity, and um, it's nice to see you all and uh, on a virtual mode. And of course, we are all waiting to meet in person. Uh, hopefully, we'll start our services in person. Um, so praying for that. Um, well, speaking about what God has placed uh, in my heart uh, to share with you all this morning. Uh, when I was uh, asking God on what should I be uh, speaking, Lord, what do you want me to convey to your people this week? So... I was just thinking and then um, I think this is the topic that God has placed uh, on my heart to share with you all. Uh, last week, we have had a very important event happening. Uh, can any one of you unmute and tell me what was that? I know it's going to be a silly one. What did we celebrate last week? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. You got it. <laughs> right? So the very famous Valentine's Day was celebrated the past week. And uh, you know, uh, all of us, married and unmarried people, uh, we all had uh, our share of Valentine experiences. Right? So, and uh, what uh, surprises me is there's a lot of, uh, you know, hype that is going around this Valentine's Day. You know, uh, uh, right from the advertising that you see on the papers, so many, you know, advertisers asking you to buy this and that for your Valentine. And that's how you're going to express your love to your uh, loved ones, right? So a lot of advertising. And uh, if this was one part of the Valentine's Day celebration, the other part was the moral policing uh, uh, section, right? Uh, some groups of people saying that, no, this is a foreign culture. We don't want this to happen. And some of them protesting to declare Valentine's Day as uh, uh, Shahid Divas, uh, you know, to uh, commemorate the martyrs and their sacrifices so they wanted this to be uh, declared as something else right so just thinking about all these things it really appeared silly mm, and um, uh, it set me to th think that love is such a simple thing if you look at it but yet it is a complex phenomena love is a simple Thing, but yet is a con complex phenomenon. Um, I came across a funny uh, letter on the internet when I was um, uh, preparing for this sermon. Um, this was a letter that was written by a woman uh, to her ex-fiancé. And the letter goes something like this. I would like to read the content of the letter to you for you all. I quote, Dearest Jimmy, no words could ever express the greatest unhappiness I have felt since the breaking of our engagement. Please say that you will take me back. No one could ever take your place in my heart. So please forgive me. I love you, love you, love you. Yours forever, Mari. And under this letter goes a small note. Please uh, note and congratulations on winning the state lottery. So the motive behind this lady's, the very sweet letter to her ex fiance is obvious, right? But true love has no motive. True love is selfless. If we have to speak of true love, I think only God's love qualifies to be true. God's love for us is an expression of his eternal nature. As we all have learned in the many sermons that we've heard from our pastor and all the others from the speaking team, God's eternal nature is love. It is, a not, it is not a reaction to our current behavior. 
God loves us because of what he is, but not because of who we are. Our conduct never modulates its intensity. It is unconditional. It is self-sacrificial love. He chooses to lavish this love on us long before the foundations of earth was laid. So brethren, I think when we talk about love, it is God's love alone that qualifies to be called as true love. So I thought, why don't we look at what the Bible also says about love in our lives? Now, uh, some there are n number of scriptures that talks about love. You no, know, love towards our fellow human beings, our love towards God. Um, so, but I have selected few scriptures which primarily talks about what love is. And as we've heard the scripture being read to us by Gary, uh, I think this is the scripture portion that clearly defines what love is, isn't it? First Corinthians chapter 13, um, it, it defines love in, uh, in a very precise and a crisp manner. So the author here goes on to say that love is patient, love is kind, it is not envious, it is not boastful, it is not self-centered, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it does not keep records of all the wrongs that we've done against each other, it does not delight in evil, and it is always protecting, always trusting, and always preserving. Uh, and God's love is all of this in our lives. In Galatians, um, love is uh, listed as one of the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, it is the first fruit of Spirit out of the nine that have been listed. Love is the first fruit of Spirit. In Romans, we read that and we are instructed that love one another with a brotherly affection. Let love be genuine. Uh, goes on to say in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, it is said that all that we do we have to be doing it in love that all that you do be done in love when Jesus was asked by a scribe um, uh, as to which was the uh, greatest commandment of uh, that is given to us in the scripture Jesus based his answer and uh, on this particular characteristic, that is love. The commandments that Jesus gave to be the greatest commandments, both the commandments are based on love, isn't it? So Jesus answers uh, that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second one, which is also based on love, he goes on to say, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes on to say that there is no other commandment greater than these. John, uh, in chapter uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. John's point in this particular scripture goes on to explain that love is not just an emotion. Love is not just a lip service. Um, it is a way of life. Love is something which we just don't say. But love is living sacrificially in all the little things that we say and also that we do. Love is something which dispels hatred and helps us to live selflessly to honor our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we have to love one another. It sounds good, but can we do it? Once a wise man said, I love mankind. It's people I can't stand. I don't know if we can call him a wise or a clever person. He says, I love mankind, but it's people I can't stand. 
Indeed, it is true. In many of our lives, we do have this problem with us. We all understand that people can be irritating. To live above with those we love, oh, how that will be glory. To live below with those we know, now that's another story. Isn't it? All of us have our own stories. Sometimes it's hard even to love our own family, our parents, our children, our in-laws, and our spouses. One guy told his wife that if she really loved him, she would have married somebody else, right? So marriages can be difficult. And um, speaking this just after the Valentine's Day is again another story, right? So uh, living with people uh, whom we live with and share our lives with can be difficult sometimes. And I, I think most of the times it is difficult. Even, you know, um, people at a church, in your church can be difficult to love sometimes, right? We sing choruses like, we are God's people, we are a family. I'm so glad that you are part of God's family. And then we look to our side, to our neighbor who is singing besides us. And then maybe you must be humming to yourself, I'm surprised you are part of God's family and my church family, isn't it? So sometimes living with people can be difficult. Maybe they are within the close-knit uh, group of a family, our spouses, our children, or even um, maybe with extended people in the church or at your workplace. But brethren, what does the Bible say? It instructs us to love one another with a brotherly affection. God commands that all that we do has to be done in love. So how do we make love a dominating character in our lives? Is it possible for us to make love a dominating character in our life? Yes, definitely. It is possible, but it takes a bit of effort from ourselves. So today, I'd like to leave you all with three simple points as to how to make love a dominating character of our lives, right? So first, to make love the guiding force in our lives, first thing that we have to do is to make love a priority. Make love a priority. Indeed, loving people might be difficult, yet the Bible commands, for this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We spend time on what we deem important. Uh, for many of us, these choices are valid. Time with our family, time with our friends, with, uh, no, time for our work, time for our personal meditation, prayer, uh, no, helping others and keeping up with your social groups. Right? So... All these things are important, but the scripture reminds us that even if I donate all my goods to feed the poor, and even if I give my body in order to boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. So even if we do all that is required, all that we are aspiring, and do all these things without the underlying a um, reason of, of the reason of love just because you love an other person if you're not doing these things based on the character of love all that we do goes to a waste jesus or god gives us the um, freedom to set our own priorities but god also commands us that we make loving God and loving his people our priority. And that is the reason why I think uh, Jesus uh, states these two uh, uh, commandments as the most important ones and the ones which are summarizing the entire set of commandments that have been given. Right. So making love 
a priority and making it the basis for all our services, all our deeds or work that we are doing is very important. The next thing that we have to uh, remember as to how to be uh, loving and doing things in love, we have to understand the importance of love. Unless until we really understand and realize um, that love is needed and it is important, I don't think that we will be able to base our actions and our services on love. Uh, Apostle Paul gives a logical interpretation of Jesus' command of uh, the, the two commands that are based on love. Mm, and um, he says that if, uh, I mean, if you interpret the, uh, the scripture, see, if uh, one loves his neighbor, he will not commit adultery with his spouse. And if, uh, if you love your co-worker, you will not be lying to him. And if you love your enemy, you will not uh, hate him or slander him, but rather you would be praying for him. So that is how I think love fulfills the law. Because when we truly love uh, each other and the other person, we will not desire to hurt or violate him or her. Thus, we do not break the law. So God established love as an impetus mm -hmm. for obedience. The third point that I would like to leave with you all uh, this afternoon um, uh, is that we have to live the distinguishing nature of love. We have to live the distinguishing nature of love. When we demonstrate Christian love, it distinguishes us from the rest of the world. Jesus goes on to say uh, in John chapter 13, 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, Notice Jesus did not say that people will know that you are his disciples because you promote his agenda or because you preach his word or because you are wearing a Christian t-shirt which says that Jesus is my Lord or because you have um, uh, printed some uh, scripture on your card. So Jesus doesn't say that the world will recognize you as his disciples by uh, looking at these outward things that we often do to project that we are Christians. But rather, he says that the world will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. From the very beginning, God's plan was to develop people that reflected his character. And his character is love. So the very purpose of our creation, brethren, I think we can say uh, is the love. It is God's love that overflowed in between the triune community and it came into our lives. It took shape of us in, in the form of human beings. So we were created in love, out of his love. We were created in his love. And God expects this love with which we are created to overflow through us to his other create uh, to his other creatures like in, including men and uh, including the men and even animals for that matter so god expects his love to overflow to flow through us to his creation um i have come across a very interesting uh, anecdote uh, that uh, missionary who uh, served in Africa um, has written, uh, this uh, missionary named Ira Gillette, he, he served in East Africa for many years. And when he returned uh, home uh, to report on his activities overseas, uh, he came across that when he uh, came across a very interesting phenomena. So, uh, this particular missionary, I think he was working in a hospital 
maybe he was a medical missionary, which I'm not very sure of. So they used to treat people and distribute medicines in this particular uh, East African country. So in his stay uh, in this place, he has noticed that two groups of African peoples, people, they traveled uh, quite a long distance to come to the place where this missionary was working and distributing the medicine. So on their way, this African groups, on their way, they had to cross one or two government hospitals and then reach the mission hospital. So uh, this missionary, uh, Gillett, was very surprised. And after observing for quite some time, he asked these groups of people as to why they are not going to the government facility because that falls, that is quite a little nearer when compared to this mission hospital. So uh, on being asked, these uh, uh, one of the groups uh, has replied, the medicines may be the same, but the hands are different. The medicines may be same, but the hands are different. Brethren, that is the virtue of love incarnated. That is God's love flowing through his disciple to the larger group which the person is serving. This kind of love makes the difference. Brethren, Christ has no hands, no uh, feet, but our hands and our feet. We are his ambassadors representing him to the world. And when we love as he has loved us, it will make the difference. So on this day, let us be conscious and let us be uh, proactive in finding ways to express God's love in our lives. It might be at your workplace. When I was uh, preparing uh, on this, even uh, God was talking to me, right? Uh, I can take opportunities at my workplace when I'm in the hospital, when I'm helping my patients or the mothers who are pregnant and who are giving birth. So I can uh, bring or show them God's love. I can be gentle and tender the way I deal with them, showing God's love towards him. Like many a times when we are working in the hospitals, especially in the birthing rooms, the environment is very harsh. You know, you see people yelling and uh, screaming at these uh, women who are in pain. Uh, they slap them, they beat them. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, no, most of the time they talk to them very abusively, very roughly. Uh, I don't know why, but this is the culture that we, uh, we actually have. So uh, in such conditions, uh, a kind word, a kind deed often brings a lot of, you know, um, appreciation. So I, I think only that appreciation will definitely glorify God when you are appreciated for your kindness, for your gentleness, for your you know good words and you know being good and professional in your work. It brings glory to God. So um, uh, we have to live the distinguished nature of uh, love. So how can we demonstrate this distinct distinctiveness? Apart from being uh, no, uh, professional and uh, doing um, things in a different way from the rest of the world, I think another way um, of you know, uh, doing this is to value the other person, right? So uh, love is primarily an active work, right? So it is interested in the well-being of another person. Love acts for the benefits of, benefit of others. God loved us not because of who we are, but rather he had something to offer to us. We didn't have anything to offer to him, but he had something to offer to us. He loved us so much that he offered himself and gave his only begotten son. So when you realize that love is giving, we also realize that in our lives and we have to uh, you know proactively invest ourselves in the other person in our lives uh, there was another funny story which uh, i came across 
valuing the other person um, there was one particular preacher uh, rather a, a pastor who who was licensed to uh, do the weddings in the us so every time he performed a wedding whenever he's been asked by the groom um, the question pastor how much do i owe you for this for conducting the entire ceremony uh, so this preacher would very cleverly say not much dear as much as you value your wife right so imagine if that came in front of the newly married woman the man has to shell out whatever uh, he had in his pocket right so uh, this preacher uh, that way i heard has become quite rich after performing few weddings so value the other person in in your life right it might be a spouse your child your friend um, your colleagues unless you recognize they are precious and that they have been given to you and placed in your life by god to love them and to show god's love to them i think we definitely will be careful with what we do and brethren one more thing that we have to remember love entails a cost right even though i think we, we may think love does not need any you know expenditure it definitely involves a cost no it has to get your hands dirty uh, um right um so as i told you it it is it is an action verb right uh, it involves your time your effort sometimes even your money right um there there is one person named as bob pierce uh, who is the founder of world vision uh, this is a international christian relief agency so uh, this uh, bob had been uh, diagnosed with advanced leukemia and uh, he was uh, counting his days and then he thinks that before he dies he wanted to visit a friend and a colleague uh, in indonesia before he died so he takes a flight he goes to this country to visit his friend and um, uh one particular day bob and his friends they will be just walking in a village like area in indonesia so as they walk together in that small village they came upon a young girl uh, who was lying on a bamboo mat next to a river i think she she was just placed next to a river under a tree and she looked very sick and it was obvious that she was dying and when inquired uh bob came to know that this girl also had cancer and she is she had only very short time to live uh uh bob uh, tried to talk to her and gazed at her and uh, she didn't understand what bob was trying to talk so suddenly he feels that compassion for that girl and he feels that he should you know kneel down beside her and pray for her so even though the girl didn't understand bob uh, kneels down beside this girl and holds her hand and prays for her with a lot of compassion because he too was in that state now after the prayer was over uh, the girl looked up to bob and said something which he didn't understand so bob asks for a translation of uh, what the girl has said uh, then his friend replied she said if she could sleep only once she said if i could only sleep again so that was her request she was in so much of pain and agony that she was not able to fall asleep so uh, bob didn't know what to do but he remembered that he had something that he can offer to this girl he had a box or a small bottle of sleeping pills which were prescribed for him because he too had that problem he was not able to sleep at the night so he was given this medicine so which he was carrying for his trip so that uh, bottle he remembers and then he hands over that bottle to this particular friend and asks him to give to that girl every night so that uh, till the pills last which probably were some 10 12 pills so until the pills last he asks uh his friend to explain to give that to that particular girl so he gave this 
out of his compassion, out of his love, and it really fostered him because he had. By the time he goes back to his, you know, refill his prescription, it might be another ten days. So he has sacrificed his ten nights of sleep to make this girl comfortable before she dies. So that is the love. That is the sacrificial love that. Uh, god puts in our heart when we really like to express his love for his fellow fellow beings so i'm not saying that we have to constantly abuse ourselves and become passive doormats but christian love inevitably carries some cost even when the cost is high we can nevertheless count on god to bring fulfillment to his followers true love always costs if there is no cost there is no love so brethren in conclusion i would like to say that the goal of christian life is love god has loved us first and we are here to demonstrate and to share this god's love with our fellow beings the measure of a maturity is a love for god and love for our fellow beings if we fail in our love we have missed what it means to be a christian place your trust in christ and let him teach you how to love the way he has loved us may god give us his spirit and the strength and the ability to demonstrate his love to our fellow beings thank you